China won an $8 billion high-speed rail construction project because it is the only country that can supply a comprehensive set of high-speed rail technology. The Jakarta Bandung High Speed Rail Project is Indonesia's high-speed rail project is Indonesia's high-speed rail project. As a consequence of this high-speed rail project, China's high-speed rail technology has begun to shine across the globe. What motivated Indonesia to finally decide to build high-speed rail? Japan is enraged with me. What is Japan's role in this competition? You can thoroughly know the history of the high-speed railway that connects Jakarta and Bandung. After witnessing this film, one may be inspired to make their own. An abandoned high-speed railway connects Bandung, Indonesia's fourth biggest city, with Jakarta, the country's capital. With four built stations and a length of around 150 kilometers, this high-speed rail route cuts through nine municipalities. It employs Chinese high-speed rail technology and was built utilizing Chinese tool specs. The design speed of high-speed railways is between 250 and 300 kilometers per hour. After this high-speed rail is completed, the trip from Jakarta to Banam will only take 40 minutes. When it was revealed that Indonesia will build a railway in 2000, Japan was the first to take note of the project. Japan sent negotiators to Indonesia to obtain this project. Following its restoration, determining the length of this railway needed a large amount of time and material resources. Japan quickly designed three sets of construction plans for Indonesia's high-speed rail line. As a consequence, it possesses a plethora of experience and is now considered as the world's leader in high-speed manufacturing. Japan is not in a hurry to execute this contract since it believes it is the best nation to build high-speed rail. However, since China's infrastructure has received worldwide accolades, Indonesia has grown interested in it. When this incident spread to its borders, Japan panicked since it was the only nation that could export a comprehensive set of high-speed rail technology at the time. Their relatively high price is due to this origin. Japan planned to invest $8 billion over an eight-year period. Indonesia naturally picked China to construct the railroad. For the last seven years, Japan has been hard at work on this project. As a result, it stands to reason that it will not allow China to take over the high-speed rail project. As a result, Japan specifically informed Indonesia that the construction period for high-speed railroads may be reduced to five years. In terms of time and money, Indonesia was torn between Japan and China at this period. China seems to be the best. However, China's high-speed rail development is still in its early stages. Japan, on the other hand, has years of experience with high-speed rail and will likely have more to give. At the same time that Indonesia was having difficulty reaching a choice, Japan and China were expecting Indonesia's decision. The Indonesian government quickly announced its withdrawal from this high-speed rail project. This high-speed rail project will no longer be supported by the government. Instead, Indonesian local firms will collaborate with businesses from other countries there was significant skepticism in Japan when the news broke since there was no guarantee that the Indonesian government would really construct a high-speed railway. Businesses must accept various risks in addition to the fact that Japan is building this high-speed rail. If the firm El Alud's capture Indonesia does not pay in advance, Japan will face massive damages. However, China accelerated its pace by saying that it would offer Indonesia with a full loan without any government guarantees. But when the news reached Japan, it was shocking. Believing that China is more interested in humanitarian operations than in development projects, but Japan was enraged because China, which had any technological breakthrough, had snatched away its long, promised initiative. Japan designed a plan to persuade Indonesia to give up China. Japan uses this strategy to make China's high-speed rail unstable by circulating reports that had died four years ago. At this moment, Indonesia learned of the news and began to reconsider its choice to purchase high-speed rail from China. As soon as word of the collapse of China's high-speed rail reached Indonesia, China personally went there to explain the issue. Finally, he demonstrated the entire mortality rate of China's high-speed rail system to Indonesia. According to Indonesian statistics, China's high-speed rail system has the lowest death rate of any high-speed rail system in the world, at 0.4. In the end, Indonesia picked China to develop high-speed rail, whereas Japan was a complete disaster. Why isn't Japan attempting to reclaim the high-speed rail projects that China has granted it? Only Japan can currently provide a full spectrum of high-speed rail manufacturing services throughout the world. Germany has even lately developed high-speed rail lines. And despite its recent creation, 
the United Kingdom is substantially more sophisticated than Japan. China's high-speed rail technology is far ahead of that of other countries. Japan is anxious that the rest of the world will recognize Chinese technology. As a result, Japan will lose numerous orders. As a result, in order to subjugate China, it began servicing the whole globe. To compete with China in this high-speed rail project, it made all effort possible, but it ultimately failed. And why would China promise to build high-speed rail systems for other countries at such a cheap cost? A high-speed rail kilometer costs $50,000. China, on the other hand, has cut the cost of $30,000 per kilometer. This is just the expense, and there is no profit. Why is China significant? This is really related to China's One Belt, One Road initiative. China's objective is to modernize the Silk Road. It is conceivable to extend China's high-speed train line, which would not only benefit the economy of the countries it goes through, but would also allow China to export more goods and maybe raise the GDP of certain countries. This time, the Jakarta Bandon high-speed rail may not only boost the development of the Belt and Road, but also disclose to the rest of the world the level of high-speed rail manufacture in China. Japan would go to any length to compete with China for this high-speed rail project. China has achieved complete development. China and Indonesia are neighbors and allies. They continually promote the concept of win-win collaboration. China acknowledges Indonesia's true needs and supports its corporate decision not to provide guarantees to the government. A joint venture corporation between China and Indonesia was established there after friendly discussions. Indonesia accounted for 60 of the shares. China supplied 40 of it. The two countries constructed the abandoned Jakarta High, speed rail jointly, establishing a community with real benefits and a community that shares the future. China also insists on synchronizing development objectives, putting people first and transferring high-speed rail technology to Indonesia to promote indigenous industry. As a consequence, Japan stepped in just as China and India were about to sign the. As a result, the levels on both sides diverged. As a consequence, the intensity of high-speed rails fluctuates. After the high-speed rail system is completed, Japan will transfer control to India and even commit to providing staff training. In the face of such tremendous temptations, India chose Japan, but Japan assumed he had re-entered the competition. However, prior to development, the land was not seized by, not only am I late, but I'm also unable to begin work. India has also promised that it would be placed into operation on the 17th anniversary. As a result, India's high-speed rail networks did not meet international standards. The high-speed rail system has several faults. Even on the first day of operation, there was a major water leak from the air conditioner. It was fixed by China, who found that the manufacturing standards were different, preventing further maintenance. Developing countries are increasingly more confident in their own future growth path. China will work closely with developing countries to accomplish modernization in the 21st century as they grow more soberly and totally aware that modernization is not westernization. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Click here to view a video about another frightening project.